What's happening, weirdos? This is uh, this is exciting. This is Mike Brabiglia. We um, we recorded this when I was in New York, just a, a, a week ago, and we shot it in his studio. So if you're watching this on the video, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, it's going to look like Mike's studio. And also, the first I think it's like ten or fifteen minutes are there's no video. So on YouTube, it'll be whatever whatever Joe throws up there. But the video will kick in uh, about ten or fifteen minutes into the conversation. So if you only want to see it, you can skip ahead to that, but uh, you can listen to it the whole way through. Um, so happy you guys are here. Not much to say up top. Uh, my Netflix special, I Am Not For Everyone, is available now. We have new Batman videos on my YouTube channel, which is at Pete Holmes. Hope you guys like those. And uh, tour tickets are at PeteHolmes.com. All that stuff. Pretty easy stuff. Pretty easy. This episode is brought to us by one of my absolute favorite Pete's Picks in the world, which is Modern Mammals, which is, what is it? I could I can basically say this in five seconds. Modern Mammals is a shampoo that's like not a shampoo because when you wash your hair with shampoo, your hair looks like shit. It looks like absolute shit. It looks like a bale of hay that you put in the dryer and then you stapled to your head. It looks terrible. My whole life, I didn't wash my hair when I wanted my hair to look good. Modern Mammals comes in. I don't know how they did it. They developed this new formula. It's kind of like mud. You rub it, rub it in your hands. It smells great. Rub it through your uh, hair and you rinse it out. It cleans it. So we're talking comb, brush, goes right through. Feels great, looks great, but it looks great. That's the key is it looks like I washed my hair yesterday. It's fucking nuts. I wash my hair now before I go on TV. That's ins like I did the talk this week. Wash my hair before I go on the talk. What is going on? They figured it out. It's shampoo that cleans your hair, but makes it look like you didn't wash your hair with shampoo. It's a total, total game changer. They have bars, which are pH balanced, fragrance free, minimalist packaging, no plastic. So if you want like an earth friendly, great way to easily rub it in your hands, get in here clean your hair without ruining your hair or they have it in the more traditional kind of shampoo style goo that uh, you know goo shampoo is goo i like that one too it is incredible if you want the wave it gives your hair that this swoosh this swoosh i don't put any product in it i just wash it with modern mammals 30 seconds to perfect hair i fucking love it it's a game changer over 40,000 guys have switched to this instead of traditional shampoo. You got to see the reviews. Guys are losing their mind. It blows their mind. Once you use it, I swear you're hooked for life. I am hooked for life. You can't go back to regular shampoo after this. And it's a small grassroots punk rock company. These guys were just fed up with shampoo frying their hair. And they set out to create something new for guys to have perfect hair, a shampoo alternative. It's six seconds <laughs> to have a perfect hair day. On demand, Modern Mammals. Couldn't, can't say enough about it. Go to modernmammals.com slash weird where people can get a combo deal and try both the bar and the bottle for 44 bucks for both. Once you do it, you're never going back. You're very, very close to perfect hair and never having that tumbleweed look for your big date or your job interview or whatever you need to look good for. ModernMammals.com slash weird. Also, of course, I'm wearing them right now. I only wear them. The perfect jean. I wore them for my Netflix special, The Perfect Jean, because they look perfect, but they also feel perfect. I like stretchy pants, but these are stretchy pants that don't look like stretchy pants. In fact, they don't even really... They do feel like stretchy pants, but you don't feel like you're wearing yoga pants or PJ pants. But they're kind of somewhere in the middle there, meaning it's 2% spandex, 2.5% rayon, although they have a new 99% cotton version, which are dope. They also make khaki jeans, like khaki jeans. Khaki jeans. They have it. They have you covered. They have your lower half covered, and they stretch. I don't know why we're not wearing these pants. These pants are total game changers. They give you extra room so your nuts aren't crushed. Your nuts ain't crushed, and they provide the only true home for your bone. They're also incredibly, incredibly well-crafted. The colors are awesome. They're basically high-end designer jeans that feel as comfortable as a baby's butt. You might even forget you're wearing pants. I love them. I did a complete overhaul. The perfect jean has changed my jean game. They look incredible and they're comfortable enough to sleep in. I have. 
I have slept in them. And they're not they're not just fucking cotton khakis. If you want khakis, you get the khaki colored ones. Look dressy, fucking great. And spare your nuts, everybody. Spare your nuts. The perfect gene for the perfectly imperfect men. 20% off when you use code WEIRDO at checkout. Liberate your lower limbs with the one and only perfect gene. Whether you're working with lemons or lentils, a three-leaf clover, or a big old honking eggplant, the perfect gene has got you covered. Take a peek at theperfectgene.nyc. That's the perfect J E A N dot NYC. Use code WEIRDO for 20% off at checkout and thank me later. Modern Mammals Perfect Gene, two standards. Get them both. Get them for someone you love this holiday season. Pretty much any man that washes his hair and wants to look good or wears jeans and wants to look and feel good, Modern Mammals Perfect Gene. Boom. Thank me later. All right, enjoy my chat with the wonderful Mike Birbiglia, whose uh, new special, uh, The Old Man in the Pool, will be or is available. I should have looked that up. <laughs> it either will be or is available. I'm pretty sure it is available on Netflix.com, the website. It's incredible. I've seen it several times. Check it out. Check out everything Mike does. Check out his podcast, uh, Working It Out. He's so good. And one of my dearest friends, we make fun of each other a lot in this podcast, but know that that's out of love. And don't forget to get into it. But let me start by saying we've seen, we had a sleepover last night. I think we should talk about that. We did have a sleepover. I know it's your podcast, but we should, we should no, talk about that. No, I don't mind, that. buddy. <laughs> I could use a day off. You know what I mean? Oh, I know. I know you know. Well, sometimes I go on podcasts and... Either they take over or I take over, and, and I'm kind of good with either. Either way, yeah, yeah. If, if someone I'm takes in the over, mood, yeah. yes. Well, I'm stealing that phrase from Conan, who we were just talking about. This guy, he said, uh, Marty Short, Martin Short, is a day off. I've said that oh, many times. Oh, I love that because that's always been my goal when I do late night. Is I want the host to say you're a day off. I'm always unabashedly going for. Thank you for making it so I could just not just sit there. Yeah. But they don't have to steer. They can laugh. They can interject, but they don't have to pull it out of you. Everything's like that. Like, I think marriage is like that to an extent, right? Mark marriage. Mark marriage. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, I think, I think that, um, I think that marriage is like that in the sense that it's like, sometimes it's not that doing the dishes is hard. We all yeah. know how to do the dishes. It's the act of like you show up and they're done. Yeah, that's right. There's something you're about a day off. Yeah, you're a day off. No, that's one of the biggest cliches that is true is that like, and not even sex. It sounds when I say like doing the dishes is foreplay, it means yeah. like Val's going to give me what I want. Yes. Which is a right fucking. It's not that. Wow. You, beca you can become that guy. I'm not. That's you mean you, no? That's you. you that's like a, a part more, of you. Like a that's more a... popular comedian. <laughs> <laughs> like if I was saying things like that, people would be like, "Thank you." Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. You do look much better today. Speaking of making fun of each other, I'm more and more well rested. I'm glad. I well, we, was worried about you. We oh, so the, we I'm did give... your podcast in for 20 minutes. I was like, "Are you on your way out?" Like you look like. <laughs> You look like a medium. I wanted to ask you to ask questions to dead people I know, because you looked like you had one foot in the river yeah, yeah. sticks. No, I get it, I get it. I, so to give context, <laughs> PD and I have been friends for a long, long time, and a uh, long time, borderline maybe 20 years or something. Borderline personality disorder. <laughs> borderline, borderline personality, 20 years. And, uh, and, and then we've been on each other's podcasts a lot. Um, and so he's on this and you're working it time. out might be my fifth time so today I'm on you made it weird but yesterday we recorded him on working it out and there's great jokes on there that are oh, new, yeah, you new jokes for working yeah, out yep. um, but you came but we met on a Sunday because you're on tour yeah and I, I just did. done DC and I came in on Sunday <laughs> and you're not used to recording on Sunday mm -hmm. so you came in looking like I mean, you look squashed. Yeah. I looked like I something bad. was wrong. And I looked all, I mean, I felt juiced. Like I had been working 
like, you know, I had done shows the night prior. So yeah. when we were recording, I had been on stage like 12 hours earlier. Yes. Or maybe less. So I felt like virile and ready to go. And you looked like I was interrupting a family man's Sunday. Yes. <laughs> so you saw I family honest... you saw family Mike and then this yeah. you slept over our house. And I saw morning and you Mike. saw morning Mike. And I said, This is key. This, I'm glad you're good. This Thanks. is good. This is worth mentioning. I saw you. I was on your little outdoor area. Yeah. And I saw you through the glass getting coffee or, yeah. you know shuffling around yeah in basically you know those slippers that are bare feet yeah. you didn't have those on but that was the vibe yeah yep <laughs> and i like was it. like oh my god mike is uh you know me in the morning comedian yeah and we do yes like what element does a does a comic let you into their life seinfeld he had you over for dinner, maybe, or no. lunch? No, I never no, had No, 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 I don't mean literally. I mean, like, his audience knows him in a suit. Oh, okay. You know I, mean? I follow the, we the metaphor. We know you getting an ego out of the toaster. Oh, like, that's know, what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Oh, I didn't even follow that. I'm when saying, you were saying that before. We, it, it's, it's kind of an indication of the intimacy level. Yeah. You go, like... I'm a little tired. I'm a little raw. Right. Like, and I just need to kind of tell somebody. I'm enjoying this. This story. I'm enjoying this impression. <laughs> What's funny is you talk that way off stage too. We had dinner last night. Yeah. And every once in a while, we're all kind of performing because it was a bunch of performers. Yeah. I don't mean it as a bad thing. Yeah. But it'd come back to you and you'd be like, no, I know. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> wow. And then you'd tell this great you had dinner with Marty Short. We're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Tell me about a dinner with Marty Short. I will we'll ask you about Old Man in the Pool, which premieres on Netflix. Yeah. The I, And thank you. And thanks for... You probably saw Old Man in the Pool three... Of course I did. Two or three times, probably. Of course I did. Yeah. I lo and it, it, I loved it. I'm and on. it was fantastic. And there's a drawing of the of the set design, which I really appreciated. Oh. You're just so deliberate. Like, I feel like <laughs> I'm out there... I'm a patch of wild growing Irish <laughs> moss that every once in a while I'm like, look at that. It really looks beautiful. And you're out there making us all look dumb because you're you got like a bonsai tree and you're trimming it and you're putting clean white stones at the base. That's what I mean by the I, set design yeah. and the light design. Yeah. The lights shift. And I'm sitting in the crowd going like what the fuck? And you yeah. know what? Can I also give you another compliment? Oh, please. When we were... I want to... I was, I was about to discredit myself and just be like, nah. that was Seth Barish and Beowulf Barrett and Hannah yeah, and Aaron and all these that's designers. That's what all the curators do. They go, but I asked someone to do it. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. You still ask someone to do it. Right, right. <laughs> Doesn't... Oh, you got help? Right. I'm not asking for help. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the other thing when we were doing bits... And I'm just so privileged to be your friend is that I would tell you, like I'm working on a joke about thinking about getting a vasectomy. This is not a spoiler. You should still listen to working it out. It's yeah. great. But like you always, and in your own work, go towards the real thing. And I'm saying like, oh, having a child is so much harder than I thought. And then I had some funny vasectomy jokes and you're like, no, talk about that. You know, like, Why, you're like how it's so hard. Yeah, yeah. that's the secret. Yeah. And I know we've said this every time we talk, but like, yeah. what is the secret? We both of us tear up. By the way, you were like, oh, our episode was a two-parter. And then you're like, no, it's a one-parter. <laughs> Last night, which which you said as a burn kind of, and you told that to Judd, you were like, hey, we did this two-hour episode because I was like, maybe it'll be a two-parter. Uh, and then I'm like, this isn't as good. It's a one-parter. And I'm uh, sitting there like a schmuck. No. As I go to bed last night, just a little bit. As I go to bed last night, I'm like... The part where I told you the secrets I tell about my parents, part two. Mm. Wacko Jacko, where you died laughing. Oh, uh, Wacko Jacko part is amazing, two. yeah. It's all in part two. It's in the second half. <laughs> no, you're right. What do you want to happen? I said you got tired after, not during. Oh. So after you're tired and you're like, what am I, crazy? That's nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I got defensive. Let's see if it, oh, I think it, it still will be a one part. That, that's the Pete Holmes I think that's the Pete Holmes Achilles heel defensive. Because as you know, I love you. I love you. I love you. Love your comedy. Love your new special. Love your tour. Love yes. your new jokes. What's the heel? That I get 
I think you get defensive. I think I do too. I think you have something that is kind of like cornered dog when you're not cornered dog. You're, I feel so seen and loved right now because I told you. So last night, Judd, Otsko, Otsko Otsko's husband, Ryan. Yeah. And Jenny. And, and Jenny, us, your wife. And, and me. And my daughter. And your daughter, Una. Yeah, we're all here at the apartment. I hate when people go like, and she was my date. But I did feel a bond with Una. Oh, God. And she was mm-hmm. my date. I hate oh, the no, whole I hate that. universe. Me thing. too. My dad goes, how's my little girlfriend? Oh, I'm like, God. God. <laughs> stop God, it. Stop. stop it. Please stop. stop. Let me stop. Let me cut you off right but, there. But we're not. I we're, That's a level of closeness we don't have. I can't be like, will you fucking stop? That's gross. I yes. can't. I just have yes. to be like, well, she's doing very well, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was I in, I was enjoying Una. We were writing poems together. We oh, were yeah. having laughs together. Uh, so I felt accompanied, <laughs> like a friend. She's pure joy. <laughs> She's pure joy. That's all I mean. So any who's uh what was I saying? Oh, so the cornered thing. The, the, we're going to bring it right back to you. But that I don't need is, that. No, I know. But this is your episode. Oh, okay. But, but as, this is good audio of a friend <laughs> lovingly <laughs> saying like, hey... I said, hey, I noticed you look like you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you said it to my wife. And fortunately, my daughter, and was, my Judd, daughter was, I was nearby. Like, Is Mike okay? Like, I, But you look great right now. <clears throat> That's really funny. I needed some time to just get accustomed to how translucent you are. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you and I, and hopefully we won't do it again today, on my episode of Working It Out, we just burn each other for like 10 minutes straight. There's a lot of burning. We come at each other so hard. A lot of Bill Burr impressions, too. A lot of Bill Burr impressions. You did, I mean, you do it on your podcast, but on mine, you did a lot. You went into every impression. Every person that came Swiss up. Swiss Army impression, man. It was Swiss Army. And just like a Swiss <laughs> Army, you know, I wouldn't cut a piece of paper with those scissors. <laughs> but, you know, they are scissors. Yeah. Technically, they're scissors. Yeah. So anyway, my wound, and Val knows this, is if I start to feel like I'm vanishing... Which is so weird because all of my metaphysical and spiritual pursuits is to come to peace with the idea that we're not special and then it's all just kind of like this one magnificent thing. Yeah. It's not about an individual identity. But if you start taking away my individual identity against my will. So this will happen sometimes with dinner parties with Val. And it was happening a little bit last night where it was me, you, and Jed and Jenny. And I know my place in that. And then two new people come yeah. who are wonderful. Yeah. And I actually really want them to like me. Yeah. And so it's just different. It, it brings me back to junior high and that defensiveness that you hear when I say, that's in the second part that you're saying needs to be cut. That's in the second part. I'm grateful for it. I'm going to put this to you too. My wound is also my strength. Yeah. The thing that is our downfall is all the other side of it is the pointy spear that we use to like get through the cobwebs. So two things to unpack from this. One is I'm sorry, I'm not done talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was talking so much. It was too much. Please. So, so a couple of things to unpack. One is I had you over, and you really, to your credit, you went out of your way to come from DC up to New York. I was like. I saw your tour schedule. You're one of the favorite all-time working it out guests of all time. People people email me about it. People message in the comments on Instagram. They're all me when with it, fake emails. <laughs> Phil Speed <Bim>. Gnomes. <laughs> At Gmail. Well, Speed Gnomes wants you back. I mean, do you know him? <laughs> Speed homes at Hotmail. Um, <laughs> sneet, sneet poems at, at gmail.com. Um, sneet poems 102 <laughs> at gmail? Um, no, so it was, it's, it's a commonly, and, and people will literally come to my shows and say, I love it when you and Pete Holmes spar. And so, I mean, we spar because we're not sparrs. Yeah, 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 people yeah. who don't really spar no, with other the people. Guys that usually hold the bucket for the boxer to spit in. It's like, what if they fought? Yes, exactly. <laughs> what if they? That's what it is. No, that's great. The but so so people are like, when's that again? 
And I'm like, well, we just live so far away from each other that it never quite works. And I went to Los Angeles recently and Val took you out on a little like getaway thing. And so you were like, sorry, I can't do it. Oh yeah, the surprise <clears throat> vacay. Right. Where Val, the joke there was Val just saw I was in town, but didn't see. Yes. <laughs> I would say this if Val was here, she laughed too. She was like, I didn't see that every day had lots of things planned. But I'll but one was... for one you on the Val thing. So, yeah. so I'm like, will you come up and do the podcast? And it was, we had never done a Sunday. We only do Monday through Friday. That's when everybody's in. That's when my staff's in. And, um, I will do Sunday. And so you saw my Sunday self, which is a disaster. It was. And like a dad, a da the dad from Parenthood, basically, the Steve Martin from Parenthood, kind yep. of like holding everything all at once. And then you saw Morning Mike this morning. That was the most <laughs> natural Mike I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I was like, you've all, you should be by a coffee maker and it's dripping in slowly and uh, you're just waiting for one cup to be in there <laughs> so you can let it sizzle on the hot plate. And so. So there's that, and then, oh, this is the kicker. I didn't tell you this last night, it would make you feel subconscious, or I didn't want to let on, I let you, I, I told you, but I didn't tell you too much. Um, I forgot I invited you to stay overnight. So we finish our podcast recording, and he, you and I had had text That's messages so that were very funny. loose. And so, <clears throat> I'm gonna contend that, but like, <laughs> I, I could pull it up right now, but I don't have to. No, no. You can trust me when you said you can stay here, and I'd say that sounds great. Yes. So that happened because it's eight hundred bucks. No, no. I mean, New York hotels are it's crazy. insane. But by the Holiday way, Holiday Inn eight hundred bucks. It's every city right now. By the way, it's it's Chicago's like that. And there's no non eight hundred dollar option. Maybe DC I could, is like that right yeah. now. But New York is particularly egregious. Hey, hey, Gary. Oh Gary man, Miller you here. rushed. You're okay. You're I'm sorry okay. to rush everybody. It, Hi. It's my buck up. He's he has to catch a, a train at noon. Okay. Cool. Hi. <laughs> We've been recording nice for you. this. <laughs> We've been recording for this long. You guys long. are okay. <clears throat> it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's all mellow. It's all mellow. This will just be for a clip or something. It's it's so okay. nice. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah. So we've been recording for fifteen, um, for for Pete's show, and then and then the whatever video we get, we'll get, and we can also um. Those lights. I know, it's nice, right? See, everything you're doing, <clears throat> and see, unlike your show, we're not going to edit this out. I like this. I like them to hear. We're going to cut it out and send it to you. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to send it to you. Cut is such a funny. It's, you said it sort of mean. Like, I, I'm not kidding. You will not get this. No. We will. No, no, you won't. This is the, this is my no. this is the show. <laughs> no, my no, show you won't. Is soda cans opening. No, no. Staff I'm, discussing. I, I can't allow it. You laughing. I can't allow it because Mike, we got to hear. Like people need to know that there are comedians like you, that employ other comedians first of all, and that speak to them uh, compassionately, kindly, and uh, let them behind the curtain a little bit. Gary, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Gary, Turn the fucking camera on and get out of here! Gary's sweaty. He went up the stairs too fast. <laughs> Mabel, Gary. close that closet! <laughs> Mabel's, Mabel's, sorry to be, it feels too personal to be checking your sweat levels, but Mabel's cool as a cuke. No, I know. Mabel's fine. Yeah, yeah. That Mabel, I, Two I, at a time I, I, on the I stairs. pointed out before, Mabel, for, Mabel is, uh, can I say 22? It was 22? Never afraid. I'm like, I was more afraid when I was 22. I was afraid of everything. I got married when I was 22. Oh my God. Can you I imagine? I can't believe that you, you got married when you were 22. Say? This is not how I really feel, but I remember <laughs> after I got divorced, I was like, why didn't anyone stop me? Somebody stop me. Yeah, but you didn't but, you didn't have anyone in your life who who would have stopped you. That's true. Because I'm no I'm and thinking also, about who was in your life at that time. And it was a lot of people who were like, rah, 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 Christianity. For sure. Yeah. If I well, that's why you need a Mike Birbiglia. Well, yeah, you Well, you're, that's why you need too, a friend that goes you are, in fact, the consummate friend that goes, What are you doing? That's why well, even roasting you that you looked unwell. Oh yeah, that's you, me. So Gary and Mabel, you guys missed yesterday on the podcast, or Gary didn't. That um, I was concerned for Mike, 
But what literally was like, are what you okay? What service am I to my, I know Mabel's like, <laughs> thank you. Someone said it. <laughs> See, you guys are all like the frog getting slowly boiled. I walk in and I jump out of the hot water and I go, Mike's Mike's not good. <laughs> I'm going to speak to the camera and say, we're on Pete Holmes, You Made It Weird, and Mike Birbiglia. We... You look like you only eat honeycomb uh, cereal. Okay, well, this will make no sense in this context. I'm trying to set up your video for your YouTube channel. Brought to us by honeycomb cereal based on your complexion. <laughs> <laughs> this is You Made It Weird. Um, I'm Mike Birbiglia. I'm the guest. The video today is only uh, from now until the end. The, the audio, you can listen to the first 15 minutes on any Apple podcast, anywhere you listen to You Made It Weird. I like when people say, wherever you find podcasts. Wherever like you they find don't know. podcasts, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I yeah. say, whomever you find your podcast. But here on uh, YouTube.com, you can watch the last 40 minutes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is not bad. The first 20 wasn't that great. I'm just kidding. I liked it. See, that's something I feel like you the, would say. The last 50. 50. I think so. It's only 10-10. Oh, great. It's great. only 10-10. Great. 10-10. 10-10. 10, 10. 10, 10. 10, 10. I can't do Burr anymore. I did it too much yesterday. We, dun, 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 we, dun, went, dun. we went so hard on Bill Burr impressions in the episode yesterday. I wish you could tell. I thought it was very interesting that you said, like, Bill loves comedy, but he's he doesn't he's not super aware of you or, or me, like he's focused on his thing and then he has other interests. He's really I think into that's like fair I think to say. I, what I've heard it's is, interesting. I'm not close with him, it's like, what I've heard is he's really into like drumming right. and like sports. I think that's completely, I think that's true, based yeah. on my experience. But that means he's like a, kind of like more like a real, <laughs> like a real person. I respect it. Yeah, well you and I get together and we're not talking about anything except comedy. We talk about Bill Burr. We, we talk about Bill Burr. Talk about Bill, Bill Burr's Burr and out Oscar there talking Oscar about... And exactly. Yeah. Should we go back to that? Yeah, so, okay, so the two things I wanted to point out about last night, Yeah. and I'll bring Gary and Mabel up to speed on this because they didn't know. So, but they know my habits. They know that this kind of thing would be true. Yeah. So we record working it out with Pete, and at the end of it, he goes, so I'm oh. staying overnight. Yeah, I'm like, where I go, should I you put are? my bag? Yeah, we talked about it. I'm staying overnight. You invited me to stay overnight. Yes, yes, you are. Yes, you, you are. No, I go down you're, to you're flattering yourself. You weren't that good at it. You were like, oh, what I should have <laughs> said was Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I spoke in my own joke structure from 2007. <clears throat> For I mean, some reason. It's still on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to distance yourself from it, maybe don't frame it and hang it up. <laughs> We're, by the way, in the Working It Out studio, and we are surrounded by by tour posters and special posters, uh, which is what Pete is what referencing. What I should have said was nothing is framed to my right. So, um, so okay, you so, didn't know I was staying. I didn't know, and then I went, and then I weirdly, I went down to Jen, and I go, okay, so Pete is, I, I offered to have him stay overnight, so he's staying overnight. And she goes, where? And I go, I don't know yet. Um, he could you stay. have a couch? Yeah, I go, we, he could stay in the office. But also I go, we could have Una sleep in our bedroom in the bonus bed on the, on the floor, and then he could sleep in Una's bed. And bonus then we, bed. And then we had to measure Pete and yeah. see if he would fit in Una's bed. Yeah, I'm and like, he uh, And he doesn't. Spoiler no. alert, he doesn't, but he slept there anyway. I don't fit in most beds. Me and Goldman. Yeah. Me and Goldman aren't fitting in any beds. That's a wild thing. So, so I'm like you, Gulliver's so, Travels. So then I wake up and I'm pinned down by a, ti a <laughs> tiny civilization <laughs> most days. <laughs> so part two of this is you said to me, we're walking down these steps. You go, I'm staying overnight. I, I'm thinking to myself, okay, all right, so that's happening. And then and then you go, and I invited Judd Apatow over uh, to have dinner. Uh, okay. And I love Judd. He had to come over I the other night for dinner, too. I invited Judd to have dinner. And we you, would meet here, and you were welcome to join if you wanted. Okay. It turned and, into a, a family and then, style. And then I had invited Atsuko Akatsuka, who's a comedian friend who's been on working out a lot, and and has been on You Made It Weird, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and her husband Ryan. So then it, all of a sudden it became like seven people uh, at a dinner party, and it and was a sleepover, and a sleepover. So yeah. it was dinner dinner party sleepover, and it was. <laughs> I think Gary and Mabel relate to this, and and uh, 
the difference between, and I think this could be a bit, a five-person dinner party and a seven-person dinner party, all of a sudden, totally different. That's exactly what I'm saying. And this is a bit, by the way. I don't even know what the jokes are, but well, you know, I, it's mark my words. It's like you steal that bit or I steal that bit and put it on stage, and that thing will work. It's people yours. know. People yeah. know. You got five people. It's civil. Yeah. Seven seven people somehow seven you're taking is, shifts. Well, somehow you're at the, the WWE. Ships. You're at like a you're yeah. at like a monster truck. No, you're watching convention. different constellations of three momentarily take the focus. And you know what else happens with seven that wasn't happening with five? Lulls. Yeah. Every and they uh, they've timed it. it Psychologists lulls. have done studies. Yeah. Every seven minutes, we would just be like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the other one, mm. and Ryan will be comfortable with me saying this because we're fr- we're close friends. So I say to Otsko, I go, so Otsko, I want to talk you to talk to Una because some of the boys at school they just they chase her around. Like, did you have that as a kid? She starts answering as she's answering. Ryan starts talking to me on my right. Yeah. So Otsko's on my left. He's. I go. No, did you just what? What are you doing? Yeah. I just had about to, something else. She's, yeah, about something else. Totally different thing. Yeah, they're like, we gotta keep these conversations under control. Buddy, you're There's talking- only seven of us here. Come on! But it is over the limit. It's over the limit. See, I'll start to vanish. What is the limit? Let's establish Five. a limit. Gary, Mabel, what do you think? What's the what's the right amount of people, Gary? I like five, four to five. Gary four says to five. four to five. Mabel. Four to five. Mabel four to five. says four to five. I think seven. you're right. You know why? Because in seven, this happened. When you said that, the, gr- the boys won't stop ch- chasing Una. I had a response. I'm sure Jen had a response. Yeah. I'm sure Otsko had a response. Held your fire. Ryan had a response. So you hold it. Yeah. And now you have conversation kind of, you know, you're backed up. But you're waiting. And by the time the window opens, it's too late. And that's what a lull is. <laughs> that's, that's what good. a lull is. That's a good you bit. Go, uh, Bring it on working out. It. Bring it on working out. We're on working it out, baby. I know, I know. This is a crossover episode. This is like <laughs> it's like when Alf walks into Cheers. <laughs> hey! Hey, Sam Malone! Mm, I kill me. <laughs> You're right. This is a crossover. This episode. is when the critic was on The Simpsons. Yep. It stinks. I never saw that, but the critic? I believe you. The critic was great. Anyway, we're two comics, and you guys are comics as well, right? You got into this because you were like, let's let's clean up the hedge maze. Okay. Of conversation, of parties. Right. All people think it's narcissism. It's not. It's right. a relief for everybody. Yes. I'll talk. <laughs> I know I'll talk. I know that you feel that way. Shh. You do too. We all know that you no, feel you that way. You do too. No, no, no. It's compassionate. No, yeah. How I'll dare think you? Of an interesting How dare you do? Hour. You do too as an insult. You do too. <laughs> you just got you do too. <laughs> you, you just do got too. you do too. You because do Because you do too. It's nice. You look, when you, when I started, there was a lot more ego in it. It was like, finally, I'm going to get my the attention that I deserve. Yeah, sure. I swear I feel more in touch with the like, this was nice of me to think of something we could all enjoy. Just yeah. like a song. You know what I mean? You okay. ever wor- like I work with Glenn Hansard. That man just wants everyone to have a good sing song. <laughs> he wants to have a good yeah. sing song and he wants you to forget your troubles. As I get older, the more I'm more Hansard than I am yeah. 22-year-old Pete, who was getting married and doing stand up comedy. <laughs> good yeah. combo. That's a good combo. You want to pursue Here. the most difficult career path and also get Christian mingled. But let's, all right, let's bring the dinner party into the universe of stand-up comedy. Really similar. It's it's arguably, a, it, or you know what it's more like? It's more Tell like me. an improv scene. Well, that's why. The, Five people or seven people at a dinner party, it's an improv you scene. You know what old homes used to do? <laughs> Two-man improv. You know why? Yeah, two What pro- am I going to stand? Two-prov. We talk about it here all the time. Chris I'm, Gether and Tammy Sager are doing it right now. I'm going to stand on the back wall and watch you guys do a show? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking that's beat it. You know, beat what the pro- it. you know what the problem with the don't think twice guys are? Too many of them. Fucking beat it. They can't all shine. So Gethard's all, eh, should I put drawings in my submission? Beat it. You should have been in every scene. No breaks. Then you become Keegan. You want to be Keegan? <laughs> Do two man <laughs> or two person, I should say. 
Like Hugh Man. <laughs> oh, Petey. You're on fire this morning. <laughs> All we needed, Gary, am I right about Pete? We just needed to get him some sleep. Oh, my God. I did sleep about 12 hours last wow. night. It was fucking great. You're a giant man. You're, you're, so, you're so giant that animal control might take you away by accident. Yeah. Those tennis ball nets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most days, my day ends when the tennis ball nets find me. If I me. saw you in an animal control truck yeah. driving by, I'd go, good yeah. work, fellas. <laughs> Yes, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, you're, you're a big, big guy. Let me, I'll steer it just because we don't have all the time in the world to old men in the pool. Okay. And say that you, it's about death. That's right. Do you think a lot about death? Because yesterday it didn't look like you do. Because I, <laughs> because I looked you on the verge in of death. <laughs> like a man that was like, it'll be fine. Right. I'll just eat white bread and mayonnaise. Well, <laughs> It's literally Nick Kroll's impression of me all the time. He'll really? just go, does anyone have mayonnaise? Like, literally, all right. Wow. Yeah, that's what happens when you know someone since college. Their impression of you dates to, like, 1999. Does anybody have some mayonnaise? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, God. I want to go to brunch. Just wait, Gary and Mabel. Your friends will mock you for things you did three years ago. Does anybody have any mayonnaise? <laughs> trying to do Kroll. That's good. It's okay. You get you 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 do a good job getting your voice there. Yeah, it's you, it's singing, it's pitch. Yeah, that's what I've noticed, and that's why some days you can't get it, and it's because your throat is off or whatever you know, because mm -hmm. you're trying to sing. It's like when I did Morgan Freeman <laughs> yesterday. That's you know good. what I mean. That's, that's because good. my voice is warmed up and all that sort yeah. of stuff. But some days you try it and it comes out bad. That's interesting. Yeah. So death. So death, yeah. So am I thinking about it a lot? Um, well, what made you want to do a show about it? Were you like, this is un undiscovered? Like, I'll I'll be the first to. Kinda... No, it's not that. It's not that. It was. Uh, it was just. I think that com stand up comedy is best when you're discussing obsession. And so, by the way, that's all you get to say <laughs> on this I show. A, I had a feeling I wouldn't get to say a lot. Well. I felt you. Go, I felt you. I felt you going into uh, press mode. You were answering. You were answering a question. So I'm going to disrupt that shit right here and say, the Latin word for passion. Passion was obsession, and it was actually a bad thing. The passions. Yeah. Like it was almost like look out for your passions. That's what that. That's what the biblical passions means. Is that Not what you're the talking passions about? of Christ? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. That just means torture. I don't know why they okay. called it right. passions. Yeah, but I, I'm it was talking a kink, about it was a kink some people had. <laughs> what, I do you, what are you passionate about? Murdering I that guy. This. I love this. <laughs> I wish we had a crucifixion every day. Oh God! But then it wouldn't be special, Mark. Oh God! Exactly. Well, Judas <laughs> seems to want to do it every day. For what? Nine, Come on! Nine pieces of silver. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're a, you're passionate about death. No, I'm obsessed. Oh, I, obsessed. I'm no, sorry. It, it's it's the uh, it's the thing of, and I'm not. This isn't a press talking boy, by the way. This is like this is like keeping you on your toes. I get you. Um, I can tell. I can tell when comics aren't talking about the thing they're thinking about. I love what you just said. What you just said, like when I induct you into the comedy <laughs> hall of fame, and I'll get it wrong, I'll be like, I'll never forget, I'll talk like my dad, when Mike Birbiglia said, I'm tired of comics not talking about what oh I can God. tell they're thinking about. And we'll cut to John Mulaney in a glass jar, he's floating in a blue liquid. Wonderful! Why would he? He's be in miked. The, why would he be in the blue liquid? He's because he's something happened, and he's in a blue. <laughs> he's being suspended <laughs> like Ted Williams in a blue liquid. <laughs> Sus stupendous. Because it's the future. I don't Mike. know why he's in the blue liquid. It's the future. I'm old. You're old. Mulaney's the same age in a blue liquid, but he's just ahead. Is it? Well, I've known Mike. Not are yet, John. Are wealthier people in blue liquid? Yeah, yeah. All the hot people are in blue liquid. Okay. The Kardashians, blue liquid. Yep. They're they're all floating in blue liquid. Yep. Some people have the yellow liquid. Ugh. Yuck. Yep. Yuck. A good bit for its time. 
A very now, people don't get it now. <laughs> yeah, this this coming from a yellow liquid. He hosts SNL seventy two times in the liquid. <laughs> so 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 when you induct me into the Hall of Fame and John Mulaney's in Blue Liquid, and I look like Jabba the Hutt, you look like Paul Rudd hasn't been outside in forty years. <laughs> yeah, which I already look like. Um, the uh, is you would you would quote the thing I just said. Yeah, which that, is basically yeah. like I don't we like watching out. comics. We went on a riff tange, but that is the one of the most insightful things I've heard about comedy ever. And you've put uh, words to a feeling. It's almost like you discovered a flavor. Like we're eating chips for the Frito-Lay Corporation, and you're like, umami? Because yeah. when I'm watching and I'm like, that's not how you feel. That's not who you are. Yeah. And frankly, that's not even what you're thinking about. That's not what you're thinking about. And I know it. And I know. know. Isn't it. it weird how you know? That, that's one of the things I've learned from being a confessional comic, people always say. I can't believe you tell people all that stuff. And I go, like, everybody knows everybody's stuff. That's so funny. Just look it around. You kind of know everybody's stuff. Look around. Yeah, that's true. You kind of know everybody's stuff. I, I tried to do this for a while. I was like, hey, everybody out there that's addicted <laughs> to pornography, we all know. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. We can see it in your face. Yeah. You can. I, yeah. I hate, like, that's not entirely true, because certainly there are people that are getting away with it. Yeah. But, you know, there's a sunken eye kind of, there's a way that you scan people's bodies. You're just, I know you're thinking about dicks and puss constantly. Everybody's just, you're like at a steakhouse and bodies are segmented like filet. Yeah. Rump. Yeah. Because all you do is look at two-dimensional images of hardcore pornography. Yeah. Yeah, that explains why this lunch is going so fucking weird. Beat it, Elliot. I just made that up. I don't know anyone named. But Elliot. then you gave up pornography. I try. I, I, I'm light on myself. If I if I have a little, I'm not. Rough I remember on you it. did a while back though. I remember you talking to you about it. You were like, I gave up pornography. I gave up this. I gave up this. Goes. What's well, <clears> what I'm talking about? Yeah, I was always admiring of that though. That you had this kind of, uh, this kind of self improvement focus. Well, I do. We talked about that this morning. Yeah. As I was taking my element and drinking my fiber and all this stuff. I was like, yeah. there is a Christian, a latent Christian, I'm impure, so I need to like fix myself. Oh my myself. God, yes. Right? That's what you were talking about, yeah. yeah. So that that's in there. That's certainly the self. Wait, when I was pretending to listen, that's what you were talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by pretending to listen, you mean the synapses behind your eyeballs hadn't yet been found? Like the first 30 minutes of your day, you're just like. Oh, yeah, I just oh. couldn't put words to it. You look like tapioca in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> but then you finally came to. And we could barely tell, yeah, Gary, to be honest. Gary and Mabel are laughing in a way that I don't like. You have it's to. Like, it's like you're really nailing me and, the, <laughs> and these folks who work on my podcast and, and are my dear friends uh, are just like, Pete is nailing Mike in a way that, that we maybe couldn't without it being like over the line. This is what you do. Yeah. When I go and do Conan's podcast, you just make fun of Conan because oh, the I know staff I did the same thing with it. Conan. They, they love, love it. it. They and love I it. think he loves it too. I'm, yeah, with Conan, I'm a little more, a lot more gentle. Though. Keep in mind, this is your podcast. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it because we did yours and you did interview me, and I'm allowing you to interview me, and I shouldn't. Okay, but I do, I do forget what we're talking about. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I love BetterHelp. I love therapy. We talk about it a lot and how it's changed my life, and especially at the end of the year. The holidays can be a really tricky time for me personally, and it's been super helpful to talk to a professional in the past and still is when I'm feeling those holiday blues. It's kind of weird when everybody else is so happy and you need to vent some stuff. But it's more than venting. Talking to a professional is greater than the sum of its parts. It seems like you're just talking to somebody, but something magical is happening that can be really transformative and healing. This time of year can be a lot. It's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it, but feeling, but adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings, and therapy can be a bright spot amid all of the stress and change. Something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. It helps with family stuff. It helps with boundaries, work stuff, obviously relationships, and all different types of feelings. Talking about it helps. It helps so much. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It couldn't be easier. It's entirely online. 
designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can even switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So do something new, something positive, feel grounded, and get to work on yourself. Trust me, it helps. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash weirdo today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash weirdo for 10% off. Give yourself a little extra boost this holiday season. Also, we're brought to us by our friends at Ritual, the best and only multivitamin that I've ever taken that I actually take and feel ready to start my day. I talk to so many people about vitamins and they all kind of poo-poo it, like you just pee it out. You know when you take a multivitamin and your pee is just green and you're like, well, that, that appears to be all of the vitamins I just took? Ritual has figured it out. Not only is it completely traceable, it's allergen-free, it's got a minty taste, which I really enjoy, and can fill the gaps in a normal diet. It can fill those gaps, I can speak to that from my own visits to my doctor, filling gaps really helps. You don't pee it out because it's got a delayed release. It waits until it's in your large intestine where they can actually be absorbed and get into you. So the delayed release takes care of that predator blood situation. Plus, I do a lot of fasting. If you've ever taken zinc on an empty stomach, you know it's it'll make you barf. It's your your stomach does not want it. The delayed release takes care of that ritual is the perfect multivitamin to take when you're fasting. First of all, to get some of those nutrients in you while you're not eating, but it also won't upset your stomach. It's specifically developed multivitamin with key high quality nutrients in a bioavailable form that are clean. Ritual is a new type of two a day, helping support heart, a healthy heart with omega-3 DHA to normal muscle function, to normal immune function with vitamin D3. This small step can have a major impact. It's traceable, it's vegan friendly, non-GMO, sugar-free, gluten-free, major allergen-free, and as I said, delayed release designed to make it gentle on an empty stomach, and it even has a minty essence, which makes it fun and a pleasure to take. Essential for Men is a quality multivitamin from a company you can actually trust Trust and get this. Ritual is offering weirdos 30% off your first month. During your first month, visit ritual.com slash weird. That's ritual.com slash weird. Do something to support the show. Do something to support your body. Better help Ritual. Get into it. All right. Let's get back to Mike Berbiglia. I, I'm one of those I have a friend who, uh, and this, ha- but also this ties into death. For you, sure. Go would, ahead. Tell me. So, in other words, like you were saying, like what? You know, why do you talk about? De- why do you? Why did you start talking about death? I started working on this special like four years ago. Yeah. And it was just an obsession. It was what I was interested in. I'm sure you find this with bits. The fear I had, I had one fear, which is, oh. This might be too close to home for people who are uh, dealing with death right now. Yeah. Their parents just died. Their friend just died, whatever it is. And actually, those are the people who need it. I was just going to say, too close to home? You mean there's people in the home? Yeah. <laughs> You'd like some people in the home. Yeah. The American strategy on death is like, go in that shack that's on that cliff and just be there alone. There's no heat. There's no furniture. Just go sit in there for a while. Yeah. Or maybe stand. It would be better if you stand Blair Witch style. That's our strategy with death. That, and if you're talking, I, buddy, you're talking to somebody who's recently cut like 20 minutes of death stuff from my new hour. Really? Yeah. And a lot of it. Why? No, 20 stayed though. It's just, it was oh, okay. too much. Oh, okay. It's all you were talking but about. But like, I wanted to talk about it. I saw uh, my, uh, a guy, a man who was like a second father to me just, just died. And it's like, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. But I know crowds don't want to. They do, though. They do. <clears throat> I'm here do. to tell you. Yeah. I did an hour and 20 on it, my new special. But that's Man the, the pool. genius of going, like, come to a Broadway show. I, you know what one of my save lines used to be when I was yeah. starting in comedy? I was like, I really envy theater. Yeah. Because if you do a joke and it doesn't work, the audience goes, maybe he's trying to be moving. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's, like, ironic. But you know I, what I mean? But with me, gonna, you I'm, know I'm failing. <laughs> I don't I don't agree with that though. I, I'm gonna push back on you. And I'm gonna say, as your friend, two things. One is I workshop the old man in the pool in oh, comedy clubs and theaters. That's not what I'm saying. So it's like I don't think they need the Broadway set up in the in the in the set and all this stuff. And especially your shows. Mm. You know, I was talking to Jared Apatow the other day about your audience. 
Your audience is there Pete for the- That was very good. Pete's audience is very special. When I was doing 40 Year Old Virgin, he never talks about his movies. <laughs> <laughs> he never does. Okay. <laughs> so he was talking to me about how he was at one of your shows and your audiences are just like, you know, because you wrote a book, Comedy, Sex, God, et cetera. Like they're interested in, they're interested in your relationship to religion. They're interested in your re- yeah. relationship to existentialism, which and jokes, et cetera. So like this yeah. idea that you're saying, you're imposing on yourself this restriction on your act right now of like, oh, I can't do that. But I'm in, I'm in the middle, which is actually a great place to be. Let me tell you, Judd's talking about my Largo show. Yeah. When I go and do DC, every show there's at least thirty percent randos that are just like, oh, oh okay. it's the E-Trade baby. Right. Or whatever. It's so, the and then I start yeah, that's, going that's like, a hook. sometimes the club uses it. <laughs> and I go like, I start talking about it. I just feel it. And you know what? Matt McCarthy always says this too. He goes, maybe you're uncomfortable. You know, like no, I impose you, it on them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But You're sorry, a good no. friend because when you and Judd said that, I was like, oh no, my new hour, I don't have, I'm not trying to be formulaic, but I'm like, I don't have a new God joke. Do you yeah. want to hear my premise? Kind of working it yeah, out. Yeah, please, yeah. I go, my God is love, and I, I really miss the old one. My God is so loving, the God that I believe in now. Yeah. So the ground of being. Accepting, yeah. Accepting. Neutral, actually. Yeah. Just made of love in the way that water is made of wet. Yeah. My God won't talk shit. He's not mad at me. It's fucking, it's a snooze. Yeah. Like boring. I miss the God that Dramatic was chasing Dramatic Old me. Testament God. That was like, he jerked off again and they send yeah. the de- the angels yeah. to fucking get me. It was like Jason Bourne movie. Yes. And now my God, you sit in a bar with him and you're like, fucking Mike Birbiglia, right? He's, he's always giving me shit. And he's like, Mike's doing his best. <laughs> <laughs> I love that God. <laughs> Mike's doing his best. I like Mike. And when I'm in my heart, that's how I feel about everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I go like, I don't want Bill Maher to believe in God. I'm like, look at that. Perfect peace. Perfect peace. He defines the others. You know, we all define one another. Bill Maher's atheism defines my theism. Uh huh. You know what I mean? But we only want one side of the coin. Fuck off. That was the faith I grew up in. It's like, what if the whole field was daisies? Right. And I'm like, no, it's thorns, it's weeds, it's well, it's funny. It's that, everything. You and I were talking about this this morning. Someone asked me. Do I believe in ghosts? Do I believe in uh, Loch Ness monster? This and that. Like, sure. I don't know. Yeah. Like that's my answer. To, like anything that is outside of the parameters of the thing that culture believes in well, as an accepted. I just go like, if someone, if if five people came up to me and they say, I just saw a monster. It's a hundred feet tall. I I wouldn't go. No, you didn't. I go like. Tell me more about that. Yeah. I I didn't see that, but I don't think that you have a motivation to come over to me and tell me there's a hundred foot monster. Yeah. Like, yeah. why would you do that? Yeah. I love that <laughs> because you know what I feel when I hear that is there's a certain humility when you recognize that consciousness, awareness that's that's looking at your eyes right now. That's it's like how are you? How do you know what you're hearing? Because you are aware. Yeah. Right? So that is a miracle. And I've said this a million times, but it's almost over. I think it's so funny that we're like pens. It's almost over. That's what I always <laughs> warn people. I'm like, if it sounds like I'm repeating myself, at least I'm almost done. Oh, God. It's like we're magical pens filled with this miraculous fluid. However you want to picture this, it could be golden and molten. It's amazing. It's, yeah. it's blinding light. Yeah. And so many of you use that ink to write, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> which is so funny. Oh, I love that. The mechanism this is great. with which you is that are yours? determining. Of course it is. Yeah, and you're, you're telling you're me de- you're not saying that on stage? Oh, you think that's a bit? Yes. Give me that pen. Are you kidding me? Come on. What are we doing? All right, so we have Mike's doing his best. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had Jason Bourne. I heard Mabel laugh at that. And um, Magic Pen. Magic Pen. This is bullshit. Um, but that that what you're saying is, it's kind of what I've said in another bit. It's like nothing really makes sense. So like why would anything be any weirder than this? Every time I wake up in the night to pee, I go, oh, right. I'm in this. Mm. Like, oh, what? And yes. a lot of us... Because you're, bo- you're like, oh, my God, I'm in this body. I'm in this body. I'm in this that world. That has to, like, excrete water. It's, 
And you know what I say most times when I pee? I go, in this dream, you can pee. <laughs> That's funny. Because in, in your dream dreams. That's a good bit, too, by the way. In this dream, you can I, pee. You're one of these people. Mulaney's like this, too. When I first met Mulaney. Brilliant. I, God. Floating in the Barbasol. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm being preserved. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sarah Sherman did an impression of Mulaney on uh, SNL the other night. That was very, very funny. We watched it. Yeah. It As a very, group. Very funny. I it, hope Sarah Squirm. Squirm. It, oh, she goes by both. Oh. Squirm was, Squirm's her stage name. Sherman's uh, her real name. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. I've only known her as Squirm. Uh, Sarah Sherman would be happy to know that me, Judd, Otsko, you, not that we're special, but like anybody that can a bunch of comics put on a YouTube and just play it and kill. Yeah, and it, kill, it, it killed kills. in the room. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. But yeah, but 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 uh, I'm sorry, you were saying I, I cut you off. No, I, I said you can pee in this dream. Oh yeah, I would do that as a bit. Oh, the reason I brought up Mulaney is when I first met Mulaney, he's one of those people where half the things he says when I'm with him, I go. Do you have that in the act? And he goes, no. Yeah. You really write it down. And then he'll literally take out his phone and be like, dun, dun, dun. yeah, uh, okay. Like, he's unaware of how funny he is no, all no. the time. It's like the sink is leaking comedy. Yeah. In fact, that, that was the image I had. He's like Willy Wonka in a candy factory. I he, know it's chocolate factory, but he's I'm picturing the, candy. He's hearts. the real deal. And I from jump, I've known him agree. I've known him since he was like <laughs> he, I've known him since he was like 21 years old. It's like it just is a riot. Yeah. Just is a riot of uh observations. And it's and it honestly is, I think this is he can't shut his brain off. Yeah. He's like an insurrection of comedy. <laughs> it's like it's involuntary. Yeah. Like we can't stop it. Yeah. <laughs> But but you're like that in the sense that like I'm telling you like four things to write down. That's only I'm still skeptical, but yeah. Well, that's me literally withholding saying that ten other times during this conversation. Oh, that's nice. I'm not that's that's me being like the format of my podcast working it well, out is working out bits and me being like, that's a bit, that's a bit that's you're, it's not even the format of yours. I'm like, I got to tell you this. That's a bit. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, this is, this is what's interesting about going back to your brilliant thing that you said. Comics are often clearly not saying what they're actually thinking yeah. and feeling. One of the great things about podcasting, but also just friendship and conversation and why you can't do this in a vacuum and why we inherently don't trust comics that don't hang. Yeah. Never hang. Oh, that's interesting. And never... Never hang. The you're, never you're hang in, you're, comics. You're in a rental car and they're not shooting the shit with you. <laughs> I've had that. They're just on their phone or something. And you're like, oh my God. What are we doing? Like, Why would look, you talk I'm about all... Aziz like that? Just kidding. I love the opening for you. <laughs> it was the highlight of my life. I'm sorry. I have social anxiety. I can't talk to you in the car. I'm on my phone. The battery died 20 minutes ago. I'm looking at a black screen. Now, now I got a flip phone. Now I got a flip phone because it's a problem. <laughs> Kanye. <laughs> Kanye. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can watch this all day. You're about to. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Stop. <laughs> uh, but that, we know it's not created in a vacuum. So sometimes these conversations and what's so great about your podcast is it, you need someone from the outside, like a therapist yeah. that goes, oh, I." you go to a marriage counselor, they're like a doctor, and they go, this is where the, the issue's in your pancreas. Yeah. And you didn't know. And sometimes a comic goes, "That it's like what you did with my vasectomy thing. It's like, actually the joke is kind of about... How hard it parenting is. Parenting is yeah. ungodly difficult. Yeah. And I know... It's a cliche to tack this on, but I have to. It's like, it's my favorite thing. It's the only thing. Yeah. It's my only thing. Yeah. I love it more than anything. And Val and I sometimes look at each other like, it's like saving Private <clears throat> Ryan. And I'm like, why did I turn down the cigarettes? <laughs> Remember that moment? Yeah. He's like, they were giving out free cigarettes, and I said, I don't smoke. It's like, everybody smokes. Well, that's, in, a, that, in that's, war. A, that's a joke Jenny and I'll, I'll always say about uh, my, uh, you know, Jenny and I worked on the new one special, uh, which is also a book. It's called The New One. It's all, and people don't know because. Edit that out. 
if people don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a book and a special yeah, that has Jen's poetry and my comedy about how, you know, I never wanted to have a child and all the reasons I never want to have a child and how I was right and then how I was wrong. And then Jen's perspective, which is expressed through poetry because she's an introvert and she expresses herself through poetry and, uh, and it intertwines with that. And a lot of times people will ask us, how is Una, your daughter, going to feel about this? And, and, and we say, we always say, like, she knows and she just doesn't even believe it's true mm. because she can't imagine a universe where the person, uh, where I, this completely doting father who's completely obsessed with every tennis stroke she takes and uh, the cartwheel she makes, would not want to have a child. She can't conceive of it. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Oh, I love that. It's also, she you laughs. were right in that she area. She starts laughing when we bring it up. She knows. See, what what we're saying is children like you and I, who ex we all experience some form, I know the word gets overused, but of trauma, of something that was not ideal. And we know what it's like to be in situations where we know but no one's talking about it. Yeah. And that is unacceptable. Yeah. And that's a wonderful thing to say, that you can turn the tide of a pattern like that. Yeah. You can make the army march the other way. The This isn't my family, and I would tell you if it was, but there are so many families that I've seen or people have asked about. I just did Moshe and Natasha's podcast. Somebody called in with a question like this. Families have narratives. Families yeah. have mythologies. And when a new person comes in, like you marry somebody and they show up, yeah. sometimes they're like, they didn't get the script. Yeah. And they are like, is he having a third bottle of wine? <laughs> <laughs> and, no, and, and you recognize, this is why David Lynch movies and the, the attack of the robot people and all these things, it's yeah. like, that's us. You think zombies don't exist? You're, you're this person you know, that's a zombie that's pretending that they don't see something or or vampires <clears throat> don't exist people who drain and hoard that's the 1% you know what i mean these these no, there, th this is why it, there's a whole other ball of wax about movies right now this is why a lot of people are saying that movies right now are less realistic and they're mo more based on abstract w universes and worlds because People don't want to, they want to escape from what's happening right now, which oh, is horrible. I, I thought it was because we need the Guardians of the Galaxy to go into another planet where everything's a drawer and there's bubbles and aliens because that's what the internet feels like. See, mm. I don't know which comes first, Leela being interested in Ninja Turtles and being introduced to violence or Leela having like a Jungian archetype of, of violence, a, mo a propensity, a model of aggression that she's dreaming about yeah. and she needs reflected back to her to interpret it and distance herself from it and, and process it. So which comes first, Raphael kicking Shredder or Leela kicking the Shredder of a child? You know when you pick up your kid from school and you're like, oh, this is Lord of the Flies. You know what I mean? Like someone, way? someone just took her ball and ran away. Oh, he's someone just it, yeah. sneezed on her hair. I'm yeah. like, this is like prison. Yeah. You know what I mean? She so she has those feelings and she doesn't know what to do with them. She watches the Ninja Turtles and she's like, right, there's a force in me mm. that can fight those aggressions, that can push them away. There's there's two things at right. war inside of us. So we're sort of lenient in that way. Yeah. I'm not gonna let her watch it, but like at the same point, why do grown-ups watch it? Right. Because you probably wanna like you know, kill someone in your family and you don't know how you feel about that <laughs> or whatever who it might be. in your not, family, who not, is it that you want to kill? Not literally, but we all know what it's like. Who is it? <laughs> I have dreams that I'm fighting my dad a lot. I mean, that, that's oh, wow. a dream. And and sometimes it's my brother. I love these guys. I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm being real. Yeah, I, I And know. I wake up and I feel that like, what's going on? I had a dream the other night that I was hitting my brother with a set of car keys. I'm hitting him on the head. And I'm like, what was that? And then I watch a movie that gets into that muck, and I go, oh, thank you, thank mm. you. Why? Look at look at our art. It's so weird. I don't like horror movies very much. Like I don't consume them. I like the ones I've seen. Whatever. 
But why it's such an interesting loophole that we have as a society that we're like pretty careful about what you can say. I'm I'm with it. I get it. That's triggering, that's offensive. But we'll also flock in record numbers to a movie where like someone decapitates a horse and fucks the non-head side. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, saw is back. And it's like weird. But that to me is this remnant of a tribal understanding of sometimes someone puts on the wicked red mask and they took a dump on the fire last night and, and it healed me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that that was, um, <laughs> this is, I was at a party where Darren Aronofsky, who made The Wrestler, mm. you know, Darren Aronofsky, the great film director, he made Black Swan and a bunch of other stuff, but I, I, I had been drinking too much, which I rarely do. I don't even really drink almost ever. You look like you should have a Pedialyte. <laughs> like, I'd love to get you some Ensure. <laughs> oh, my God. Something. <laughs> Something with phytonutrients. Okay. <laughs> so that wasn't what my story was about, but... Um, <laughs> so um, I, I was so drunk that I asked Darren Aronofsky, I'm like, at the end of The Wrestler, why does he have to die? Mm. And it's so, like, I think of myself as not the person who walks up to the director of the wrestler and asks him a question that he doesn't really want to talk about. Yeah. But uh, what did he say? Because he he dies so that the so that the audience can experience it but not have to live it. Precisely. And that's it. That's right. We want a third person death. Yeah, that's what third all, person death. You'll never see it. I don't think you'll see many movies. It's one of the reasons why The Sopranos was so jarring because it was a first person death. You know what I mean? It was from his perspective. It went black, and we hated that. Right. We want our deaths third person it, because that's what we want our own death to be. It's like Woody Allen. I'm not afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it happens. We want to be a depersonalized observer of our own death. Like I don't mind seeing Pete get hit by a bus, but to be in his head, like ah, like that's not fun. Right. One of the reasons why VR is so jarring. <laughs> that's that, and that's with Old Man in the Pool. That was the goal: was to how can we laugh about the thing that we're not laughing about um, in a way that doesn't feel contrived. That was my goal. I mean, there's like a handful of times in the show where I talk about people close to me dying. Um, my family going through medical issues, near death man, medical issues, my grandfather dying, et cetera. And it's like, I think that that, the thing that you're describing about horror movies and extreme things, it's the same appeal in a certain way mm -hmm. is, is the reason why people like it is because they're going through the thing with me. And at the end they walk out and they're like, oh, I feel pretty, I feel some gratitude about yeah. my existence right now. Every night I die, every morning I'm reborn is is a nice one for me. Was that on like the back of like a, a cocktail napkin or something? You wouldn't know it because it wasn't on the back of a pack of ramen noodles that you put what chicken you powder on. What do you mean by and that? And go, Jen, I had a good meal today. It was very lean, very lean, and I slurped it up. And I think the doctor says I have another couple weeks. Who is this an impression of? I ate some ramen noodles. Because I'm on a high carb diet. <laughs> but who's the impression of? I don't even get it. Not even doing you anymore. Because <laughs> it's it takes too long to actually do you. It's too drawn out. Like I want to do it, but I don't want to ruin long. the comedy. It takes too I'd long. slip into your voice, but I don't want to ruin the comedy. <laughs> The, the burn you said of me on the my podcast ones is I'm like a podcast at half speed. Yeah, you are. You are a slow boy. But you know what? I get off stage and I go, oh, thank God I went slow. I'm always trying to go slower. All you right. might want to take a note from me and go the other way. Just kidding. You're perfect. To end, we have to end? No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly what's going on. So, so you're you, you have, have like to get five to the, minutes. You have to yeah, you have to get to the train station. It, right now, by the way, it says 24 minutes, which means if you left at 11 in 10 minutes from now, yeah, you'd I, be there at 11.24. I scheduled the ride share. I oh, okay. I won't say which one I used for fear that there's always some scam. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course. You don't know. Sometimes you go like, I just Amazon that. People are like, oh. 
<laughs> like, yes. I, I, I yeah, didn't yeah. know. No, I know. I didn't know. Yeah. We know, though. That's one of the things we know that we don't know. We all walk into apartments and it looks like they just moved in because there's so many Amazon boxes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. We're all just looking the other way on that. So we're an hour into this podcast. Is there any is there any moment where I'm going to talk? You're very funny. Well, if we can hey, get I, one if, of those things that the... you blow like a fire with to like encourage the flame, if we could stick that in you and maybe squ- maybe we could make you talk reanimate you so if people in the comments section of apple Podcasts could just go right now and just say why doesn't pete holmes let mike birbiglia talk oh, wait, that would be really helpful if thank we're you so much at my sore subjects also say <laughs> why does he laugh at his own jokes <laughs> what are yours what are yours what gets your goat i really because real quick i interrupt and jive because I'm like, if you want to listen to a fucking stale ass interview, listen to Mike Birbiglia on any other podcast. If you want information, go to Wikipedia. I'm sorry, what did you just say? What? What did you just say? What do you mean? Repeat what you just said. If you want like a straight ahead interview with Mike Birbiglia, listen to any other podcast. But what do you get on this? Just you talking? Very good. <laughs> when you were Ant Man <laughs> and you reanimated to a regular size, oh, why didn't God. your liver grow back? Like, oh, you God. seem to not be processing toxins. Why didn't your liver grow back? <laughs> what I'm it's saying is cruel. It's a piece of uh, conversation art. There you go. And I laugh at my own <laughs> there jokes. There you go. What? There you go. And then the <laughs> other thing, why do I laugh at my own jokes? We were talking about this last night, how you said you had a friend who watched my special and were like, he laughs at his it's own Mabel's jokes. Mom. Mabel's mom. Which is fine. <laughs> Which is fine. Can we keep it in? Yeah. All right. Of Mabel's course. mom. Mabel's mom. Like What's your the, mom's Like name? the special. Maybe like, the, maybe like the special. Mabel's mom said, like the special. Why is Why he is laughing he at his no, own it's jokes? Fine. It's fine. And to Mabel's mom, Tracy, and to everyone who are, I hear the caring in there. You know what I mean? There's some care. There's some interest in mm-hmm. comedy and what's good. Pull that away, sure. Just taste. Yeah, take that out. But uh, I said to you, I go, you know I've tried it both ways. Yeah. <laughs> and everything I'm yeah. doing is to delight you. Everything. Oh, is that what it is? Nothing we can do? I don't think we're picking it up. These are unidirectional microphones. Okay. I don't hear anything. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, everything everything I do on stage is to delight you. It's all it's all this benevolent trick to get us to right. a joy place. You've done it both and ways. And I've done it both ways. Yeah, you yeah. think I can't stop myself from <clears throat> laughing? I can. And I don't. Yeah. Because it's better if I do. Yeah. And I like doing it as well. So everybody There it wins. is, Tracy. There it is, Tracy. We did. We dedicate this what to you. What were you saying, though? You were about to... Oh, I was going to say this. All the teasing aside, I love you so much. I love you. That's how I thought we could close. Beautiful. No, I, I, I mean, like, if you wanted to say other nice things. <laughs> oh, that's my alarm. <laughs> that's your... Your alarm just went off to remind you to leave? Well, I have to go in seven minutes. I don't, okay. I set alarms. I set alarms on the Amtrak. You don't want to miss your stuff. Um... I love you. I love you too. I think you're one of the greats. Oh, you're out there. You know, you are your Disney World. It's like curated. It's clean. It's nice. It's interesting. I don't want to be Disney World. No, I don't mean in every way. I'm just talking about the landscaping. <laughs> just the landscaping. Just the landscaping. Yeah. Who? What the hell kind of compliment is that? I'm the that's rides. Like, that's like saying you're like, <laughs> you're, a, you're like the you're like the Death Star. Just the engine. It's got a really good engine. No, when you're older and you go to Disneyland with your daughter, this is how I know I'm 44. I go, look at those trees. Those have, those have been pruned. Oh, my God. Those are nice. That takes effort. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're all good. I love you, buddy. I love you, too. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, what? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think... Is that... Does that give you closure? How, how do you get closure at the end of your episode? You say keep it crispy. Oh, right. Okay, that. Yeah. But, mm. oh, yeah. We covered God stuff. I'm trying to think of the things in your podcast that we didn't get to. Oh, okay. You want a classic? Yeah. What's the time in your life you laughed harder than any other time you've ever laughed? So mine is uh, when I'm with my, my – and Jenny always knows all about this because she's like, it's an unstoppable force when Mike is home with his family over, like, Christmas – Sitting, standing around like the kitchen aisle, you know, late at night, yeah. telling stories about when we were kids, mm. and everyone just laughing and laughing. My brothers and sisters, and 
And uh, there's nothing funnier than that. That's great. And uh, and uh, yeah, so we gotta say keep it crispy. But but I gotta have a a way to say it. Well, this is what normally happens. I love that answer. What a beautiful answer. But I say we end the show with the guest saying keep it crispy. It doesn't mean anything. Would you say keep it crispy? I'm trying to. I'm trying yeah, to capture yeah, you yeah, yeah. on stage. Why are you laughing? I'm saying keep it crispy. I'm saying it. Keep it crispy. Can I pitch a line? Yeah. If I was in the crowd, I'd be losing my mind yeah, right now. That's right. Yeah. Keep it crispy. 